Hi everyone, so I'm here to make sweet pea soap and I'm going to put in my coconut milk. I always like to get the coconut milk in in case there's any bits or bobs from the, um, the kind of fat solids that collect sometimes, especially when it's cold. It's mostly liquid today, but I did um, stick blend the whole can's worth. I used um, organic coconut milk in a BPA free can and it has no guar gum, no, I can't think of the word, cargigen, something like that. But as you likely know, with a can of coconut milk, it usually has some fat solids. Some people actually whip those, which is kind of fun. Okay, so I just remembered I wanted to go ahead and put in a little bit of titanium dioxide here in the base. I'm just going to start with a spoonful for now. Sometimes I like to give the whole batch a head start of titanium dioxide. And now I'm going to add in my light solution. Now, a lot of times you hear me talk about the lilint on the top. I have increased my water dramatically to deal with working with a floral and I have virtually, well, I don't have any lilint on this batch. So the amount of water used does make quite a bit of difference. And of course I subtract for the milk and a little bit of sodium lactate. And typically I soap at a 30% light solution and today I'm soaping at I believe it's 28. So it increases the water by about six ounces. just be emulsified and then I will just stir in the fragrance oil subtract it out pour out into my containers and color them they won't be even so I don't want to split up my fragrance oil Probably shouldn't have cleaned that off. There was no need. So in with the fragrance oil. From what I remember, this one plays pretty nice. I do think it sometimes rices a little bit. Yes, it riced. So back in with the stick blender to smooth that out. I am going to be coloring every part of this. So I'm going to split off and then give it a better blend when it's in a smaller amount. Hopefully I have enough time to work with this batch. Now rising means that the fragrance kind of accelerates what it touches, if that makes sense. And so it does tend to bind quickly with um, the surrounding oils. Typically you can blend it back out. It's just the extra blending may cause the batch to accelerate. And I'm sitting here thinking why exactly am I doing six colors for this batch? Oh yeah, because I want to. Okay, set the main part of the batch aside for just a moment. I'm trying to think of what colors I want in the greatest and smallest amounts here. So I think I'm going to put yellow 
as one of the smaller amounts. I looked up sweet pea. I was just kind of inspired by a flower bed that was just full of just these beautiful purples and pinks and greens and whites. I was going to incorporate some white, but I have chosen not to at this stage. I would like them to be fairly past L colors, but I don't want to spend a lot of time blending in some extra white, so they may be a little bit more medium tone than I'm wanting. But we'll see, when I put in that stick blender to blend it up, I might be able to add just a, a smidgen of titanium dioxide into these. That was a little bit of purple. I noticed that sometimes the colors of, um, well, the colors don't always show as clearly or maybe as light as they do to me. They do tend to be a little bit more intense with the um, lighting and the white balance and all that. That one's definitely a pastel type, so I'm going to leave that. I'm going to add just a little bit here. a little bit of a deeper pink so I'm just gonna have a little bit of another pink I've mixed up all sorts of colors over here and that may be a little bit too close to the color that I want for my base so I'm gonna add just a little bit more of this brighter pink I'm hoping it'll be a, a little different color Okay, to the ones I want to lighten up a bit, I'm just going to add a little bit of titanium dioxide. I can grab those, grab it on the top. I don't know if you can see the texture on the stick blender. doing an in the pot swirl so this is still quite loose in most of these colors yeah even this is still quite nice so we're doing all right I want this base to be a light pink it's very thick so I'm going to add in just some pale pink mica for starters and Let's see if this can't be good enough for this batch. I do need to stick blend it, so. What I think I'll do, I'm going to add in a little bit of titanium dioxide. And I have a hint of a neon pink. Put 
push push it around on the sides so it'll pull some of that uncolored down in a little bit better so I can get it all blended in nice I started working with my molds without taping this side down because I don't always line my molds as best as I should. But I do need to hold that down. I'm just going to hold that down for a moment and then I will let it go free. So I wanted just to go ahead and get some of this color down in the base. Sometimes I pull it a little too tight and it doesn't get all the way into those corners right, which ends up leaving me with smaller bar sizes. So for right now, that is my solution. Alright, so I'm going to put the pink, darker pink, right in the middle. Leaving a bit for the top. These are getting thick, but you know, I think it's going to look really nice. One thing I've learned is don't fear the thick in the pot swirl, because you get some really nice designs when the batter is thick. in with the mold. And it looks like green's going in first. Go smack this down. Lightly scrape the container and then being careful to not over blend the colors. So I'm really glad I went with the 28% light concentration. I may go with a little smaller percentage next time just to see if I can get a more delicate swirl but we'll have to see how it cuts because you never can tell. There's some soaps like Hey Dahlia that we have learned that we really prefer a thick in the pot swirl on that one. to me that a friend of mine would just pack 
thinking about a design that she liked. So maybe I will just kind of leave it this way. I've been trying to do different things. This one is. So here we have the new batch of Sweet Bee Soap. And it kind of turned out a bit on the rainbow side, but I think we're going to like it. All right, guys, I'll see you back here for the cut. Okay, so I'm back to cut the sweet pea soap. And it turned out pretty. It was real nice with the little light colored swirls. I did get a lot of ash on this soap, but I really like how it looks, so I'm gonna keep it. I debated steaming the entire loaf, but I gave up on it. I suspect I'll have some glycerin river since it also overheated. It's really pretty. It smells so good. Love this soap. I'll have to put the description down in the video description for you. I never remember exactly what it is. But it is kind of an English garden, just not straight up the sweet pea flower. And it's supposed to be, I think, a dupe for sweet pea from Bath and Body Works, but I like it a little bit better than that even. It's definitely a preferred scent. I've done pretty good at fighting ash. I spray with a high percentage alcohol quite often. I gel, I cover, I run the dehumidifier. It's all these different things that I do and just it seems to be just based on the weather and what's going on. But two can sit right next to each other in the same situation. One can ash completely. In fact, that's what happened here. I did um, a batch of smooches. Didn't ash at all. I'm sitting right next to this one. Same oils, same everything. And sometimes it's just the way it goes. Go ahead and cut some samples. So this loaf here shows you that it overheated. Let's see if we can let me turn that around. Let's see. Can you See that crack? You should be able to. Basically, that's the soap letting out the heat. I went for years without having a batch overheat. I remember, I think it was last year on an espresso batch, and it was the first batch that over, ever overheated. And I was actually kind of excited because it finally had happened to me. <laughs> and, um,. It's happened just occasionally since then. There's nothing much going on. But I tell you what, about every batch is overheating on me right now. And I'm doing everything aside from putting them in the freezer, which I don't have freezer space to be working with these kind of a mold. And I'm always kind of nervous that I'll get a partial gel. The next morning I come up and <laughs> there it's overheated again. So it ends up just being a little... Crack. I don't know if you can see just right in there. It really doesn't end up being a big deal in the long run. I do have some glycerin rivers, but it's really not very noticeable on this particular batch. Some of my other ones where I've had to do, like Love's Pure Light is coming back. And it's one of those where I have to use quite a bit of water. And so that always emphasizes the glycerin rivers. So it's quite crackly, but that's just how, that's how that batch rolls. It's just the way it is. So we're okay with it. But anyway, I have 
my room is staying cool. Like even on the days where it was getting into like the 40s up here in the evening or at overnight, and it still was. Oh, see, I split this the the block, and I'm not supposed to do that anymore. But my husband was traveling. This end is thicker than this end. I don't know why we've discovered that I can't split my loaves accurately anymore, but this is a, uh, it's a huge bar. I thought I was being clever and doing everything that he was doing. I can see it's a little bit different and as a result, I end up with a smaller loaf. I've been listing those as gone wonky as of late. These do still fit in the box. They're just really big is all. So you get a little bit more value. That one's just plain taller on this end too. So these are some hunky chunky bars. Anyway, so I have been demoted from soap splitter. I don't know why, with me being as particular as I am about lines, why I can no longer get that. I don't get it. I don't know. It's just the way it is. So he's willing to help. So he'll split the loaves so they're a little bit more accurate. Ah. Oh, goodness gracious. I get asked all the time why I don't have a multi-cutter. Well, first of all, um, I haven't wanted to spend my money on a multi-cutter. I could. But a lot of people love the chattiness in the videos. And if I was using a multi-cutter, I just probably wouldn't be chatting so much. And I just haven't wanted to get locked in to a certain size. For the most part, I cut my soaps exactly the same width every single time. I just haven't wanted to lock myself into a particular size. I've heard from a lot of other soap makers that said they thought they needed it and bought it. And in the end, they did end up using it. They get out their single cutter most of the time. We just whip through these. If I weren't chatting with you, it'd go a little bit quicker even. So we just get through them really quick. I might change my mind eventually, of course. It may just become worth it if we, you know, just continue to increase. But we've kind of settled into a phase where we could do more, but we just... Like, I'm happy with this batch size because I can handle it um, really easily. So I'd rather make more. I'm going to save this one here on the end just for me. Anyway, I'd rather make the batches more often and have a lighter batch that I really am having fun making than to do those huge batches. I was doing those and I just, I didn't love them. And I really, I'm one of those people that think that the way you feel at the time you're making the soap kind of just pours into your soap and your batch will either go well or it'll go not so well. Often just depending on your mood and how excited you are to tackle the project. So for me, I would just prefer and I'm happiest making the smaller batches. So here we have Sweet Pea. I don't know if I'll make it exactly like this the next time. I really um, was going for a little different look on this one. But it definitely is a nice springy soap. And we'll just see how it goes the next time. Alright guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye.